What is good? Welcome back. So just so you know, I recorded this video already with no sound. So we're doing it again. Let's go. All right. Welcome to the video. So today we're talking about this right here. This is the Pentax Takumar 105 2.4 lens. Uh, the Boca Master, Boca Beast, the Boca God. Those are all names that I just gave it. I don't think anybody calls it that. But this lens right here has become extremely famous specifically for this camera right here, the Pentax 7, any of the models. And the reason is because this lens gives you extremely dreamy, beautiful bokeh when doing typically portraits, but honestly anything. Um, this lens, this particular one costs about 350 pounds or so. So do your conversion based off of that to USD or whatever currency. Uh, but that's usually shipping from Japan. If you're buying it locally in any kind of country where you live specifically, if you're not in Asia or in Japan specifically, you're probably gonna pay a lot more for it because of the fact that uh, you know, it's already in the country and there's no imports or shipping or taxes or any anything crazy like that. Um, so, you know, you can get a good deal from Japan and I probably recommend you check those out because I feel like it's hard to break one of these. So you can trust it as long as the optics look okay and all of that. But anyway, this lens has been amazing. I've enjoyed using it a ton. And, you know, before we kind of continue, let me show you some pics here of things I've photographed with it. So as you can see, whole lot of bokeh and basically all of those images. I think, let me show you this. This is kind of a very classic example of what this lens can do. Specifically, you see, it's a very simple portrait, nothing special going on here, but you know, you get close up to your subject and get kind of shoulder width and above, and the background is just gonna melt. It's gonna be crazy bokeh. You're not gonna be able to tell what's going on behind there. And it's beautiful, honestly. I think this is the reason why people get this lens because of the potential of the beautiful bokeh. Um, this kind of brings you into the territory of 4x5 where the bokeh is just incredible given that the lens is technically, you know, kind of a, I wouldn't say telephoto, but it is a longer focal length at 105. Typically the longer the focal length and the closer you get to your subject and the more wide open you are, the more aggressive the bokeh is going to be. So this is, you know, amazing for that. And of course, you know, you've got this giant negative 6x7 here. So that amplifies that idea in terms of longer focal length and distance to the subject and all of that. Um, the beauty of this lens is that not only do you get incredible bokeh when you're up close to your subject, but also when you're far away from your subject. Look at this portrait right here. Full body portrait plus a lot more detail above the, the subject. And the bokeh is just crazy. And again, that's because of the fact that the lens is producing a big negative, big image size. And it's technically, you know, a longer focal length at 105 millimeters plus wide open at 2.4. Uh, as you can see, you know, there's kind of a gradient of, of lack of depth of field as you move behind the subject. Right behind the subject, th things start to blur out pretty quickly. And then as you go further and further back, everything just melts and you get this be be really beautiful um, blur. So I don't really know, you know, what shape you would say that bokeh is or anything like that, but I would consider it as just, you know, milky and soft and, and blurry in a great way. Um, so that's something incredible that you can do with this lens. Typically to do that with, let's say a smaller format, like 35 millimeter, you're going to have to get a really long lens. Let's say 200 millimeters shoot wide open, which is typically for those lenses, no more than 2.8. And you're going to have to move away from your subject pretty far with this. You don't have to get that far away from your subject, given that, um, when you kind of convert it to that 35 millimeter format, it's going to put you somewhere in the 50 millimeter range. I think just shy of that. So it's a very versatile focal distance because, you know, it puts you in that 50-ish range and that's classic for photography. Basically, you can use that to do almost anything. And I think that's what's great about this lens. Everybody talks about the 2.4, which of course is the signature thing about this lens, but this is still kind of a normal lens. Other than that, you can use it to do anything you would do with any kind of 50 millimeter equivalent lens. Um, for a lot of people, that 2.4 becomes a bit of a crutch. And, you know, I'm not here to hate, I'm not trying to bring shade on anybody, but, you know, even think about that with regards to myself, it can become a crutch to just shoot wide open and put your subject somewhere and not really care about what else is going on. You can make beautiful images like that. They're going to be interesting and they're going to have kind of this intrigue to them, but does it qualify as, as good photography over the long run, especially if you're kind of creating a project or something like that? You know, maybe not. It all depends on what you're doing and what your intent is. But if you're looking to do something interesting, you know, Shooting at 2.4, that's been done by everybody. So, 
you know, you really wanna think about how you're incorporating that 2.4 into your photography and what you're doing with it. That way the 2.4 doesn't become kind of the only thing that's interesting about your images. And I think about that all the time. I'm trying to avoid that. And I recommend you probably do so as well. So what I recommend this lens to everybody, uh, the short answer is 100%. Um, with this camera, with the 6.7, um, you can honestly find them paired together pretty often for a decent price. I find that if you find that, you should probably jump on it because buying this lens separately on your own, separate from the body, um, especially if you're jumping in initially, if you don't have any of it already, it's gonna cost you a lot more that way. Um, this lens by itself costs, you know, like I said, 300 whatever plus pounds. This camera by itself is probably gonna cost you somewhere in the 600 pounds. So that right there is, is a, a nice deal, but potentially if you buy them together, you can get a better price. Um, but in general, definitely something I would recommend. And it, you know, again, very versatile. You can use it for anything. So definitely jump on this lens. Interestingly enough, a lot of people will say that focusing with this is very difficult. And I think one of the beauties of this Pentax X7 system is that you have this giant, um, you know, ground glass in here, which means you can really see what you're trying to focus on. And I find that focusing at 2.4 is actually very, very straightforward, not difficult. Maybe if you're in a rush and you're not paying attention, you're gonna get things that are blatantly out of focus. But if you're, you know, being calculated and, and taking your time, at worst, your images are gonna be lightly soft, but I don't think you're just gonna blatantly misfocus unless your camera is messed up, like mine was. Um, check out this video link right here, but basically uh, there was a bit of a misalignment here between the mirror and the ground glass, and I was getting images that were horribly out of focus, but that was because th there was an issue, not because it was hard to focus with the lens. So if you're worried about being able to get images and focus with this lens, I say don't worry about it because you're gonna see very quickly that when you focus and look through, everything, you know, is big there. You can really tell what you're doing. And as long as you take your time, you kind of at the beginning have to get used to it. But after a while, you know, you become a pro and you're just in it to win it. It's no big deal. So definitely recommend it. Don't be scared of focusing with this lens. Um, it's not something that's held me back at all. And honestly, I think it shouldn't hold back anybody with enough kind of practice and tinkering. I don't know, talk to me in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what you all have to say about this lens because as far as I'm aware, basically everyone loves it. But I'm sure there are some people out there who've had some interesting experiences with it or maybe prefer other Pentax X7 lenses. I only have the 75 as my other lens and that's a bit wider, um, but I've never used the 90 for example. And I think there are some other ones above 105. So I'm curious if you think some of those are better to use than this. All right, John, that's what I got for today. If you enjoyed the video, definitely go ahead and click the like button below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. I got a whole bunch of videos out there for you to watch and obviously a whole bunch more coming. It's gonna be some travel coming up soon as well. So very excited to kind of get out of my usual surroundings and put together some interesting content. All right, y'all, to the next one. I'm out.